Wanna know something weird? I wasn't a big fan of this game when I first played it on PS4 back in 2018. I beat it, thought this was pretty decent, and never thought much about it again. With this re-release on PC though, I just can't put it down. I don't know if it's the insane loading times with the M.2 drive, the fact that I could play it at a near consistent 60 FPS on my ultra wide monitor, the fact that I could play it portably with the Steam Deck, or just the simple fact that it's in my Steam library. I really now like this game, and I can't wait to finally get to play Miles Morales this fall. The web slinging is just so goddamn smooth. Just getting from point A to point B in this game is more fun than it should be. This makes some of the more mundane tasks, like collecting Peter Parker's backpack around New York City or getting a screenshot of a monument, not as dull. Spider-Man performs several actions that make getting around so great. Some of these are unlocked by leveling up and spending skill points, like the quick zip will have Spider-Man zip forward to keep his height and speed. The point launch boost and quick recovery will make him a speed freak. The amount of fun that web sling is in this game cannot be understated, and it controls so well. The combat is fun too, at least for a while. It could be argued that the enemy should have a bit more variety, but it's a lot of fun messing around with Spider-Man's gadgets. The default web shooter will have Spider-Man web up opponents. This is the reliable go-to for most fights because this is one of the only gadgets that will refill automatically. While the enemies are stuck in webs, they can't attack or defend very well. There's also a decent probability of sticking them to the wall if they're close enough. The impact web is a stronger webbing technique that will also push enemies a fair distance, but the ammo is more limited. Like the web shooters, the impact web can stick enemies to the wall. The spider drones are cute little companions that will shoot enemies and stun them for a few seconds. The electric web will act like a stun gun of sorts. It will electrocute enemies and leave them vulnerable for a few seconds. The lightning can jump from enemy to enemy, so it can be useful for bigger hordes. It can also be used to power up conduits and solve several puzzles throughout the adventure. The web bomb will explode and cover enemies around it in webs. In this state, they can't attack or defend themselves well. If the enemies are close to a wall, there is a good chance that they will get stuck to the wall, instantly defeating them. The trip mine can be fired at the wall for an enemy. This will deploy a motion sensor web that will stick the enemies to a wall or another enemy and knock them both out. It's one of the better gadgets for sure, especially for stealth missions, but it's held back by its pitiful ammo amount. These last two are optional unlocks. The Concussion Blast will emit a powerful sonic wave that will shoot enemies away at a great distance. I love the synergy between this and the web-based weapons. It's a lot of fun webbing them up first with the web shooter and then blasting them into a wall because they'll get stuck to it. The last gadget is called the Suspension Matrix and it'll create a gravity field that will send most enemies right up in the air. They will just helplessly float there until Spider-Man kicks their ass. I like the weapons on display here. It's great fun mixing and matching them in gigantic hordes, trying to find some synergy between them. The player can increase the usefulness of the gadgets by spending their tokens on upgrades, and I'll get to collecting tokens later. These will usually increase ammo, increase damage, or give the gadget a secondary effect. Spider-Man has some other useful attacking techniques that he can do. Some of these, like the swing kick, will have to be unlocked with skill points. Most of the time, a simple 1-2-3 punch will suffice, but it's a lot of fun messing around with the other moves that he has in his kit. For example, the player can web up an opponent and swing them around, hitting other enemies. The player can pick up the opponent and launch them far away. The player can also perform a perfect dodge by dodging at just the right time and getting an extra attack in on the enemy. The player can also pick up other objects such as pallets, barrels, mailboxes, electrical boxes, and throw them at enemies. It's fun scouting out the environment and seeing how to take advantage of it. When Spider-Man unlocks a new suit, a new power-up is unlocked with it by pressing down on both the control sticks. I just stick with the one that charges Spider-Man's focus because it is just so useful. Focus will be collected whenever Spider-Man lands a successful melee hit, dodge, or by performing combos. The player can tap into that focus to either restore health, or they can unleash powerful specials when the bar is full. These will usually finish off an enemy, as well as give Spider-Man a refill on one of his gadgets. Note that bigger enemies will require two full bars of focus, meanwhile smaller enemies will only require one. Speaking of enemies, a decent complaint about the combat would be that it can feel samey after a while, and the overall difficulty is pretty low even on spectacular difficulty. The enemies change it up every once in a while. Some will be holding shields that will protect them from certain attacks, some will have pistols, some will have snipers that can shoot him from afar, some will have rocket launchers, some are big brutes that will take longer to knock down. At the end of the day though, most enemies that Spider-Man faces are humans with weapons. I personally like to see Spider-Man fight wild ass monsters with elemental attacks or something. I don't think it's a huge complaint, but I definitely wanted to note it. As this is a superhero game, the story is decent. The pacing can be weird at times, but I personally think that the overall message of the game is a good one, and it gets way more touching than I remember. The Sparked Notes version of this is basically this. Spider-Man teams up with Yuri, Watanabe, and they defeat Frisk right off the get-go. He finds out about a project named Devil's Breath and finds a demon mask with the ability to possess people. He tries to tell Martin Lee about the mask, but Lee tells him and his girlfriend, Mary Jane Watson, to forget about it and drop the story. All the while, Peter is working with Dr. Otto Octavius to make the world a better place by designing prosthetic limbs. However, Mayor Norman Osborn shuts down his lab. 
Spider-Man then runs into an officer named Jefferson Davies, and they team up for a while. Mayor Osborn decides to throw a rally for Davis, but gets anonymous threats. These threats weren't messing around, as they proceeded to bomb the rally, killing Davis. Unfortunately, Peter Parker was knocked down at the rally and couldn't save the day. Before going down, though, he saw that Martin Lee was commanding the attack. Jefferson Davies' son, Miles, decides to join Peter's aunt and help out at Feast. Osborn then decides to hire a mercenary called Silver Sable to take down the demons. Lee has a grudge against Osborn and seals the devil's breath himself, which is a bioweapon Osborn inadvertently created while searching for a universal cure for disease. Lee tries to deploy it in the Grand Central Station, but is stopped by Spider-Man and Mary Jane Watson. Going back to Octavius, he wants to get revenge on Osborn for shutting down the lab earlier. Peter finds out that the arms that he's been creating for himself are actually harming his brain. Shit really hits the fan now as Octavius releases a shitload of prisoners, with some of them being Spider-Man's enemies. Scorpion, Electro, Rhino, and Vulture are among them. Octavius also gets a hold of Devil's Breath and unleashes it at Times Square. This affects hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers, and this, unfortunately, includes Aunt May. Spider-Man has to go round up his enemies as Mary Jane Watson breaks into Osborne's penthouse. She learns that his son named Harry is terminally ill and that Devil's Breath was designed to save him. She also finds out that Martin Lee was one of the test subjects for Devil's Breath, which granted him his great powers. However, Lee accidentally kills his parents with his newfound powers, leading to his grudge against Osborne. Spider-Man beats Lee, but Octavius arrives and takes both Osborne and the cure. So now Peter designs a new suit for himself that will regenerate his gadgets to defeat Octavius. After the boss fight, it is revealed that the sample of Devil's Breath is very limited. This means that Peter will have to either use the small dose to save Aunt May, or give the dose to the doctors to study it and eventually make the cure widespread. Aunt May nudges Peter in the morally correct decision while letting him know that she knew that he was Spider-Man for a while now. Peter does the right thing and cries as he watches his aunt literally die right in front of him. Miles let Peter know that he got bit by a spider and he's shown him his newfound powers. Peter then tells Miles that he is in fact Spider-Man and patches up his relationship with Mary Jane. I shorted it up a bit, but that's the story at a glance. The problem with the story is this in my opinion. It seems like they wanted to do more at points, but they couldn't. The Spider-Man enemy fights are incredibly short, and even fights two of them at the same time. So there are four enemies, but there are only two fights. There are also several parts of the story that will come to a screeching halt arbitrarily. The game will tell the player to explore the city at times, and at others, it will just throw side mission stuff right into the main story just for the sake of it. I think that this dampens replayability a bit. This game is one of those cinematic games that at times, it feels like it's just flashy to be flashy. There will be some dumb stuff like quick time events, unskippable cutscenes, and again, these dampen replayability. Some cutscenes are skippable, but some of them just aren't. Sometimes the game will force the player to be Miles or Mary Jane, who are inherently not as fun as being Spider-Man. This can lead to great moments like Miles getting chased by Rhino, but these can be a drag too. There is a lot of side stuff to do too, including hideouts where the player can beat down some enemies, backpacks to collect which can be viewed in the pause menu, research stations that will have Peter do something annoying, among various other things. My personal favorite would probably be the gang hideouts because I like the combat in this game. Taking pictures of monuments is more enjoyable than it should be too. It wasn't until the end of the game, like cleaning up all the crime in every district and doing all the research stations, that this got a bit stale. There are also 18 side missions that I barely remember, so that's all that needs to be said about those. Some have complained about this, like, they said that they're lacking, and it's basically just swing here, do that, swing there, do that. At least these will give Spider-Man tokens that he can spend on gadget upgrades. I personally enjoyed my 35 hours with the base game. Oh yeah, the DLCs are here too, aren't they? Reception is a bit mixed about the DLCs, and after playing through them, I can see why. As stated before, it took me roughly 35 hours to 100% the base game. I personally felt like that was even stretched a bit, but I mostly enjoyed my time. After going through all that... I didn't necessarily want more Spider-Man. I did it so the game could join my perfect Steam games list. It's nice to get more story on the characters such as Yuri, Sable, Felicia, and Hammerhead though. I guess I like my time with it overall. There are certainly some new ideas in there. Screwball shows up and is super annoying, but she has a nice spin on challenges. Different crime groups were added to make cleaning up the districts a bit less annoying. The problem with this though is the fact that it still takes place in New York City. So when you're slinging around, it feels too samey. It's hard to complain too much seeing how this was bundled with the remastered version, but I think most of the complaints are from people who are on the PS4 version. All three DLCs are 10 bucks separate or 25 bucks altogether. For what is around 13 hours or so of content, keep in mind, I went ham too and 100 percent at everything in the DLC as well. One thing to note is that the difficulty spikes a bit, but I actually don't mind this because the base game is pretty easy for the most part. I guess the last thing to touch on is the fact that New Game Plus is a thing. To get that 100 percent Steam completion, I have to do this. I'm chipping away at it, but I don't find it great or anything. Basically, New Game Plus is you play the same 
same game again, but your level will be the same as the regular save file that you copied from. Spider-Man will also keep all of his gadgets, and Ultimate Mode will be unlocked. Maybe it's my fault for hopping in so soon after beating the game, and then the DLCs? But it just isn't that fun right now. It feels like I'm forcing it. The increased difficulty isn't noticed too much because of the high level and access to all the gadgets so early. Not being able to skip cutscenes, as well as needing to explore the city at parts aren't helping either. I need to push through for my Steam list, damn it. I like something more like Pikmin, where the game is just designed to be replayable. I love collecting all 30 ship parts and see if I can improve my time. New Game Plus usually feels tacked on to me in other games, and this game, it just feels no different. Spider-Man Remastered is a game that I liked a lot more than I thought I would. What was once a PS4 game that I thought was merely pretty good is a game that I genuinely really enjoyed this time around. I've sunk over 50 hours into this game, doing pretty much everything that I can. The DLC is included, which is nice and I would imagine would have been even better if I didn't play them right after the main story. Some repetition definitely sets in near the end of the game, and the story is unevenly paced at times, but I thought this was a really good buy on PC. Now I can play it at 60 FPS and beyond, with faster loading, with ultra-wide support, and I can even take it on the go with me with my Steam deck. I get why some think 60 bucks is a lot for this game, because it's essentially, it was released in 2018, but I enjoyed my time with it and I would give it a 6 out of 7. Did I mention that I don't even like Spider-Man that much? The game was just that much fun.